Number 1. Lee Allen can't help but smile remembering his mom, Norma Jean Jay. A nice caring person he described her. She would always carry around canned food and actually, for like, homeless people. With the easy open lids and hand that out to them she was an artist, so she would actually teach art classes or even, I remember doing art projects and things like that with her when I was a kid. Little bit of a hippie at heart. Alan also remembers the morning she was suddenly taken away. Jay, who was 59 at the time, was living in a small home in the remote community of Three Points, southwest of Tucson. She liked having some land and just kind of being to herself a little bit, Alan explained. Jay's home became a crime scene for the Pima County Sheriff's Department on July 17, 2006. I was at work that morning, Alan recalled. I was working actually for a radio station at the time. And I came back to my house and there was cops there waiting. And just started questioning me, all these questions about my mom and this and that and everything going on. And it wasn't till the end that they told me what happened. And it was rough. I kind of broke down there and I was a wreck for quite a while after that. Jay was stabbed multiple times in her home early that morning. Whoever it was, the person, tried to cover their tracks and tried to light the house on fire, to burn it, down said Alan. And then somebody driving by saw the house on fire and stopped, called the fire department, and was able to help put it out, and that kind of saved all the evidence for the case, at least. That evidence has not yet led to an arrest, and Norma's case went cold in the months following her murder. I guess they have the person's DNA, but they don't really know who that person is, Alan said. The suspect has never been either caught for a crime or anything. It's hard thinking about that that person's still out there just living a normal life. Jay's family wonders why Pima County Sheriff's Department investigators hit a dead end. I feel like they've really dropped the ball on this Jay's daughter Leonie Dodd said of the detectives assigned to the case. Dodd says the family knows about evidence that seemingly points to a potential suspect. Norma had a diary and an appointment book she said. And in that appointment book she had an appointment with a counselor for domestic abuse on that day, the same day that she was murdered. That's pretty tall telling right there. Like, she was already having troubles in the relationship with whoever she had the relationship with. Alan says the romantic partner in question wasn't known to him and that a previous boyfriend was cleared by detectives early in the investigation. You know, my mom kind of kept, for the dating, to herself he said. Allen says the stall case has been frustrating, as has a lack of communication from the Pima County Sheriff's Department. They kept me updated for the first. I spent a long time trying to find her and to learn that somebody had taken her from me before I even had the opportunity to meet her. Yeah, it makes me angry, she said. The bitter news did lead to the discovery that she had a half-brother. Dodd looked up Allen and built up the courage to introduce herself in an email. At the time, Alan knew he had a half-sister, but did not know anything about her. He says he and his wife were talking about potentially meeting her one day just one week before Dodd first contacted him. It was one of my mom's friends who told me she was out there, Alan said. If it wasn't for that, I probably would have thought, ah, some scam or something. We exchanged some 84, 86 whatever it was some emails back and forth, getting to know each other, Dodd recalled. I said, I have a week's vacation in October. Nothing has panned out. Why don't I just come meet you? The two siblings got emotional remembering their meaningful first meeting in Tucson in 2017. The minute I saw you, I felt an instant connection, and I knew he was a good guy, Dodd said. I mean, it was just super easy. He was really thankful that I'm a part of his life. And I'm super thankful that he's a part of mine. I can see a lot of my mom in her, so it was definitely emotional for me, Alan said. It was really good getting to know her. I felt like I got a piece of my mom back with all of that. In late 2018, Dodd moved to Tucson to be closer to Alan and to get to know him better. The two are still seeking justice for their mother, but they are also grateful for finding each other. Dodd is happy to finally know her birth family. They're all awesome people, she said. I couldn't have asked for better family. It's just awesome. Number 2. Juan Antonio Espinosa was just two hours shy of celebrating his 20th birthday when he was shot and killed in a parking lot. The 19-year-old construction worker and his friend went cruising on June 23, 1996. 
Around 10 p.m., the friend pulled his 1986 Cadillac into the parking lot of a Checker Auto Parts store on South 6th Avenue to make a U-turn so they could meet up with friends in the parking lot of another auto parts store. Both lots were popular hangouts for cruisers. A group of people in the Checker lot approached the Cadillac and yelled at the two men. Shots were fired, and Espinosa, a front-seat passenger, was struck in the torso by at least one of nine bullets that ripped into the car. Neither Espinosa nor his friend was involved in a gang, investigators said. His friend drove Espinosa to what was then called Kino Community Hospital, where the victim was pronounced dead. The detective who investigated the homicide in 1996 called the shooting cowardly. Espinosa's case currently is not assigned to a detective, said Sergeant Matt Ronstadt, a Tucson Police Department spokesman. The case last was reviewed in September 2009. Although investigators don't have any new evidence, they do have suspects. We believe there may be witnesses in this case who have not come forward, Ronstadt said. We would like to speak with anyone who may have information. He was a very good son. He used to help me a lot with the boys. I used to work at night, so he used to babysit them. He loved his brothers, Elisa Espinosa Lopez said of her son. The younger brothers were seven and eight years old when Juan Espinosa was gunned down. Juan's little brothers, now young men, still visit him at the cemetery. Even though 14 years have passed since Juan Espinosa's death, his mother continues to worry about the safety of her younger sons, saying, I'm afraid when my two boys go out. Espinosa Lopez said the police know, from anonymous tips, who killed her son. There were so many people out there that night. I think a lot of people were scared to say who it was, Espinosa Lopez said. These boys kill my son, and they ruin my life. The star features some of the Tucson area's violent crimes that remain unsolved sometimes many years later. Anyone with information is urged to call 88 Crime. Tips also can be submitted online at www.88crime.org or by text message at 274,637, then enter TIP 259 plus your text message. Number 3. Tracy Beth Feltz disappeared in September 2007. Her parents don't know exactly when she went missing. They spoke with their 33-year-old daughter by telephone September 19, but couldn't reach her when they called again two days later. They reported her missing September 26. She last had been seen walking away from her northwest side home in the 8,000 block of North Hobby Horse Court, near North Old Father and West McGee Roads, after an argument with her boyfriend. Initially the missing person's case was investigated by the Pima County Sheriff's Department. Investigators met with the boyfriend, who stated that Tracy had gotten mad and left the residence on foot, and he had not seen her for some time. Her vehicle had been at the residence, and he had been using the vehicle during her absence, said Marana Police Detective Deborah Kesterson, who is assigned to the case. However, when police finally tracked down Felt's car, they found it in the parking lot of the Old Father Inn, a bar near the home she shared with her boyfriend. Three weeks after Feltz was reported missing, her body was discovered in the desert near the 5,000 block of Tangerine, near North Camino de Est. Her death was listed as a homicide, but the manner of death is undetermined, Kesterson said. Feltz's boyfriend remains a person of interest in her homicide, Kesterson said, but after interviewing and re-interviewing myriad witnesses, the case has stalled. The most important thing we need is for someone to come forward, the detective said. I know someone has information. I really need someone to step up and give us something more to move forward with. Tracy Beth was the baby of the family the youngest of Beverly and Leonard Feltz's three children. She adored her older sister, and the two remained best friends through their school years and into adulthood. After Tracy, who worked in various dental practices, was killed, her sister moved out of state to avoid the constant reminders of her sister's sad fate. We were a very close family, said Beverly Feltz. After Tracy was murdered, our other daughter had to leave. It was very difficult for her to look at the mountains where they found Tracy. Beverly Feltz maintains a bond with Tracy. I talk to her every morning. Wherever she's at, I tell her I love her and miss her. We miss her a lot, her mother said. She'd light up a room when she walked in, always a smile on her face. She was well loved by everybody that knew her. At her memorial we never expected the crowd that came in and the letters and messages. 
that was beautiful. Her death, unfortunately, was not. My daughter laid in the desert for three weeks, so there wasn't much left of her. The star will feature some of the Tucson area violent crimes that remain unsolved sometimes many years later. Anyone with information is urged to call 88 Crime. Tips also can be submitted online at www.88crime.org or by text message at 274,637, then enter TIP 259 plus your text message.